Thank you. I'm half Lebanese on my father's side. My great-grandparents were married in 1888 and, and raised eight children in the village of Hamat. With fam famine and political turmoil, the early 1920s were rough in Lebanon. Four of the children came to America in search of a better future. My grandfather, Nick, drove for the mayor of a neighboring village and was captivated by his 15-year-old daughter working in the walled garden. They ran off together, came to Ellis Island in 1923, Americanized the name Nasser to Nazer, and settled in Louisville. My grandmother, Nessa, never saw her father again. The Lebanese community in Louisville is strong, close-knit, and steeped in tradition. My new bride, Anglo mother, Jane, shocked the women in the church kitchen when she confused a sweet Arabic greeting with a really filthy phrase she'd overheard at a men's poker game. <laughs> Still, she won their hearts in honorary Lebanese. My father's first cousin, George, came to America in 1956 to study engineering. Two weeks by ship, it was the first of many visits from Lebanese family. George begged my dad to visit the old country, but when he could finally afford to go, the long civil war was on and my dad died without ever visiting his family's home. So in 2009, when my cousin Wayne suggested we take our 17-year-olds to a cousin's wedding in Lebanon, I was on it. In a country with 40 years of unrest, this was one summer of relative calm. I wasn't sure what I would find, but I knew I had to go, and I wanted our son to experience it too. For teenagers Olivia and Sam, there was way too much talk, but it was meaningful. Growing up in Bozeman, Sam hadn't been immersed in Lebanese culture. He was struck by the Paul Bunyan-like stories about his great-grandfather's strength and connected with cousin George, so close to Sam's beloved grandfather, yet from such a different place. Byblos, one of Lebanon's six Phoenician seaports, has seen 7,000 years of civilization, a place where Jesus walked and religious conflict predates the Crusades. At night, Byblos comes alive with midnight dining, Arabic music, and dancing in the streets. Eat your heart out, Colonial Williamsburg. <laughs> we felt fortunate to tour with family. One night, Sam took a flash photo on a quiet street outside an art gallery. Two angry policemen with AKs charged us out of nowhere, drilling us in Arabic. They thought Sam had been photographing their post. This checkpoint was ab abandoned, so safe to photograph. The wedding was over the top. The bride was a recent Miss Universe contender with lots of beauty queen friends. I was in my black travel dress, wandering around, taking pictures, and clumsily stepped on one of the beauty queen's trains. Believe me, if looks could kill, I would not be here telling this story. <laughs> in our small family village of Hamat, our relatives have homes all together on the same lane, right down the road from the church and cemetery. One cousin's home was destroyed in a sectarian skirmish in the 80s. Although some have homes and businesses in other countries, the family reunites in Hamat for summer and holidays. My family is Greek Orthodox, part of the shrinking minority of Christians in Lebanon. The Hamat church is where my great-grandparents and grandparents married. It's also where the family remains are including 102-year-old Auntie Shamas, the youngest of the eight, who died just six weeks before we got there. When I saw the rubber tree at the family gathering place at Auntie Shamas' home, I was unexpectedly overcome with emotion. There were brothers and sisters and cousins, old people and children. It was strange. This place was in me already, not just the tree and the family, but the things that came before them, too. My great-grandfather's home is a traditional limestone vault, common in Lebanon after the ancient cedar forests were denuded by the Phoenicians for the shipbuilding and lumber trade. Occupied today, this home shows what his might have looked like back when he lived in it with his wife and eight children. My great-grandfather's son Najib and his family modernized the family's original vault home, adding drywall to the interior and a new foyer that encompasses the original outside staircase. Uncle Najib's children live in the home today. Check out the thickness of the stone walls shown in the doorway. One day, with bulldog determination, two cousins drove us around for eight hours to help us find our ancestors' homes. Wuji Hajar, face of rock, is Wayne's other grandfather's village, and he was intrigued by what we might find. 
When the kids were bad, as grandparents would threaten, we're going to send you to Wuji Hajar. <laughs> we stopped at a family store where our cousins jumped out, talked in Arabic for about 20 minutes, and then hauled us down the road to visit with one family, then another, and another anyone who might know the whereabouts of Wayne's grandfather's house. These people we'd never met before were wel welcoming us with hugs, tea, and even offered us lunch. We, w we visited with them all for some time. Most only spoke Arabic, so our cousins would occasionally stop to tell us what the heck was going on. This lady with the caftan brought out her family photo ab album, trying to help us find a connection. When we left, she said, look me up on Facebook. After all that, we never did find Wayne's grandfather's home. We switched our focus to Bishmazin, our grandmother Nuzha's village, to find the house where my grandfather saw her working in the walled garden and swept her off her feet, or kidnapped her, depending on which version of the story you believe. <laughs> my grandmother's siblings had moved to Brazil long ago, so we felt lucky to find a Nubti family. Excited to help us, the young woman in the photo called the mayor's office for records, but they didn't go back to the early 20s. So the old man took us to the only section of town that existed in 1923. This was the only house with a wall. Though not just as I'd pictured it, I could envision my grandmother there as a girl, barefoot, radiant, ready for love and adventure. More than I'd expected, these experiences took me inside myself in a spiritual way, a new discovery of my inner Lebanese-ness. Thank you.